Hey guys, Chief from Spreadshot Games. It's been a while, but I'm back. Uh, figured I'd make a video. It's not the one I want to make, but it's the easiest one I, I can make. It's talking about shit I spent money on. <laughs> Woo! But anyway, like I said, I went on vacation, so I guess we'll start with what I got on vacation. I went to New York City. Checked out some retro game stores there. It was definitely an experience, but a lot of this stuff wasn't as good as I expected it to be. The stores were cool, but it's New York City, so everything was wickedly overpriced on most of your stuff that, you know, you kind of wanted. I didn't see a lot of cool things that, like, really wowed me. In one store, they had pretty much the most Neo Geo stuff I've ever seen in my entire life, which was cool. But other than that, things that I'm interested in, um, didn't find a whole lot. I asked for some really, you know, rare, more obscure, sought-after games that I thought, you know, a city store would have, and neither one of them did. So, things I did pick up, though, first off, I got a Halo 2 strategy guide that's still sealed in the plastic. Now, it does have a rip, which wasn't a big deal for me, because for the price that it was in the box for, um, I would have paid for it even if it wasn't in pristine shape, and even if it wasn't shrink-wrapped. But it's awesome that it is. It looks great. Um, another thing to throw in my Halo collection, because you know, I'm making it pretty known that I'm a big Halo fan. So it was great to pick that up. And the other thing I picked up while I was in New York was Castlevania Curse of Darkness for the Xbox. Um, my brother's played this game. He says it's really good. It was complete. It was only like $8.00. So, I figured, why the hell not? But, that was about the only thing. Uh, the stores were very, very cool. They had neat things in them. The gamers in the stores were extremely obnoxious hipsters. So, I'm glad I don't have to game hunt in New York City. But, that's not the reason I went to New York City. Um, it was just something extra I did there, which was, you know... It was, it was an experience, and it was fun, but it's not the reason I was there. Picked up some small things on the way, and, you know, I had my, my game fun while I was there. Um, something I've picked up for a while now that I don't see a point in holding on to, so if you would like this or would like to trade me for it, let me know. It's a NES controller port that is wireless. Uh, you plug in. I don't have the adapter. Well, I do have it. It's just not with me. You plug in the adapter to... The system and then you plug your controllers into this it runs off batteries and I don't see a point in having it I got it a while back but it is something weird I've never seen one of these before um, the guy I bought it from he's just like the funnest thing I could do with it was plug the gun in and stand way back from the TV and see who was the best at shooting ducks from far away and duck hunt which sound like a pretty cool ass idea so if you want that Hit me up, because I don't want it. You want to buy it, you want to trade for it, whatever. Go ahead and let me know. Send me a private message. Um, I went to Player's Choice a couple weekends ago and picked up two games that I was really, really looking forward to. I got Halo 1 Combat Evolved for the Xbox. Non-game year, non, it's not the game of the year edition, which is the one I wanted. So this is in great shape. I'm super glad to find it. Um, I always find the Game of the Year editions, and that's one the one I have at home. Um, I was looking for a non-Game Year edition, so I got that. And then keeping with uh, just the stuff of, you know, being a Halo fan, you got to go with Bungie. I got Oni for the PlayStation 2. And then uh, a couple eBay buys I got. I picked up Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. Amazing game. Love Metal Gear Solid franchise. Um... And so other than Halo, it's probably Metal Gear for me. I love the Metal Gear Solid franchise. Can't wait for um, Revengeance to come out. Looks cool. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of Raiden. A lot of people bitch because, you know, it's not a stealth game. But, you know, Kojima's actually come out and said uh, it, it's, it's the biggest stealth-based um, Metal Gear game ever made because you can actually play through this entire game without killing anyone supposedly you don't have to kill anyone which is pretty awesome compared to the the demos i've seen of just 
fucking killing everything to actually be able to play the game and not do any of that. Um, if they can pull that off, that'll be amazing. And I, I have full confidence. Metal Gear Solid 4, I'll go on record saying it's probably if you know one of the best, if not the best, game I've ever played in my entire life. I thought it was put together mag it was it's so so it's so unique. Um, it takes you everywhere as a fan. It does so much service to you as a gamer that, you know, you're doing yourself a big favor by playing it. Even if you're not a fan of the franchise, there's a lot to follow and stuff, but just gameplay and attention to detail in that game, uh, there's so much stuff that game can offer. So I would say definitely check out, you know, pretty much any Metal Gear game. Um, the next game I got for the Super Nintendo, uh, I'm going to let this out of the bag. I'm a huge fan of this franchise. Every game I've played of this franchise, I absolutely love. That is Kirby Superstar for the Super Nintendo. Um, I first got Wind of Kirby on the Game Boy Advance, and I think it was, one was The Amazing Mirror, and the other one was this thing called Kirby Adventures. But, oh my, I love Kirby games, and like, this has, you know, eight games on one cartridge. Um, it's a collection of some older games, some newer games are thrown in here. Like, the, I think the original Game Boy game's on here. But I really want that Kirby, like, 20th, 25th anniversary on the Wii. Um, that game looks fantastic. It's got, like, the Crystal Shards game from the N64 and stuff on there. But super happy to have this one. Um, I'm a huge Kirby fan. Hopefully in the future I can do some stuff. Uh, play some Kirby games, maybe review some Kirby games, and just uh, jump into Kirby, because I'm a really big fan. I've never been disappointed by a Kirby game. Really, really like them. Um, I had a friend send me one of these. I bought this off of them. Again, goes in my Halo collection. An Xbox 360 Halo 3 edition. So, I'm really glad to have that. Very, very thankful that he sent it to me. Um, that's going to be great to have in my collection. Another cool thing I found that's not necessarily a game, but it's game related, and hopefully it'll help expand my channel a little bit. I've already got one video up of just some messing around uh, Halo 4 gameplay footage I put up. But um, I got a HD PVR, Hope Hog HD PVR. Um, this is about, when it first came out, is about a $200 capture card, and now you can buy it for anywhere between $150, $180 brand new, maybe, if you're lucky. Um, found a guy on Craigslist selling it for $100, and he don't, said he only used it three times to capture some gameplay. Um, the thing's great. I'm glad with the quality I can get out of it. Um, if you watch the videos in high quality on YouTube, they look awesome. Um, so I was really glad to pick this up. Um, and hopefully it expands out my channel. I can just do cooler gameplay stuff for you guys to watch. Um, another pretty awesome thing I got. I got a fully in-box Nintendo 64 for about $50. Um, it's got all the cords. Um, I don't think it has an expansion pack in it. I think it came with both controllers. The box is in really decent condition. Um, but let me open this. And I'll actually show you the reason why I bought the thing to begin with. Let me check for an expansion pack. I don't think there's... No, there isn't. So, no expansion pack, but that's not a big deal. But it's got all the cords. It's got the Atomic Purple Controller. This is the whole reason I went and picked this thing up. Harvest Moon 64 was the only game that came with it. About a $30, $40 game if you bought it by itself. Card only. So, $50 for an inbox N64. Um, plus Harvest Moon, uh, I couldn't pass it up. I'm a big Harvest Moon fan. It was great to find Harvest Moon 64. It's one of the more sought after N64 games. Um, so very glad to have it. Uh, I think I'm going to wrap this up just because I don't want to exceed my time limit. So I'll make a part two. See ya.